Welcome to this Palm Sunday and uh, Sunday of the Passion, um, beginning of Holy Week, the most important week in the, the history of the world, not just the church, but of the world. And uh, I'm Pastor Sean Neider here at Zion Lutheran Church in Grand Coulee, Bethel Lutheran Church in Coulee City. Very special week. We have lots of services going on, and they're always better in person. So if you can join us uh, to see the procession of the palms and for, for communion on Monday, Thursday, Holy Thursday, and uh, the, the whole reliving of the Jesus' passion, suffering, death, and resurrection, that would be great. The, um, the service times and dates are on our website, on the service bulletin, on our Facebook page, so uh, you can get them there. Um, our, uh, we'll be continuing uh, following the, the theme we used in the midweek services, so if you haven't watched those, you can catch up with those. Uh, today we'll be focused on Peter, Grace for the Fearful, part of the Amazing Grace series. We will have a uh, uh, Palm Sunday at the beginning, John 12, 12 through 19, and then a reading uh, Isaiah 50, verses 4 through 9a, the first half of verse 9, Philippians 2, 5 through 11, Matthew 27, 11 through 66, and we will we'll sing, All Glory, Lord, and Honor, uh, that's the processional hymn for Palm Sunday, Hosanna, loud Hosanna, uh, for the sermon hymn, hymn of the day, sing my tongue the glorious battle, uh, a good hymn for, for the Holy Week, and ride on, ride on in majesty. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. I'll begin with the Colic Prayer for Palm Sunday. Merciful God, as the people of Jerusalem, with palms in their hands, gathered to greet your dearly beloved Son when he came into his holy city, grant that we may ever hail him as our King, and when he comes again, may go forth to meet him with trusting and steadfast hearts, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And uh, please feel free to read. It's good practice during this week, not only to read uh, Matthew chapter 26 and 27, not just the shorter portion, the portion that we're going to read, but uh, also the accounts in, in Mark 14 and 15, Luke uh, 22 and 23, John, you know, we'll fo focus on John on Good Friday, but uh, read throughout these verses and the other chapters <coughs> that, uh, that deal with Jesus during Holy Week. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As we reflect on our Lord's path for us in this Holy Week, we see it as a path of grace. Christ took his path from his entrance into Jerusalem to the cross, through the open tomb, for our sake and for our salvation. Among those who followed Christ on this path was his disciple, Peter. Peter is often regarded as the lead disciple of our Lord, one of the first disciples that Jesus chose. And he was often representative of all the disciples. We should not place Peter on a pedestal. He needed saving just as much as we do. He was the first to say as much when he said, Lord, save me. That was the cry Peter made when he was sinking in the waters on the stormy sea in Galilee. At first he dared to trust that he could walk on the waters even as his Lord did. But his daring faith would, have, would be come diverted from his Lord and be fixated on the strong winds and roaring waves when he began to sink. Peter was not only sinking underwater, but sinking in fear. His faith had given way to fear, and this would not be the first or the last time that his faith would give way to fear. In that regard, he is truly representative of all the other disciples, including us. 
For we also succumb to fear when crises arise and we are sorely tested beyond our own ability to see or grasp hope in such times. However, truly bold and confident Peter may have seemed, his nagging fear would continue to haunt him, and that fear would lead him to sink even more than this one occasion. But Christ's amazing grace comes for the fearful. Even in times of crises, our Lord Jesus reaches out and catches us, just as he caught Peter sinking beneath the water. This image of our Lord Jesus catching Peter is helpful for us as we continue our journey of faith in the passionate depths that our Lord is willing to go for us. Peter's journey began when his Lord Jesus called him. In Luke's telling of the story, Jesus encountered him and so on the shores uh, while he was washing his nets after a disappointing night of fishing. Peter would receive grace. He certainly did not expect that day. Jesus said to him, put, put out in the deep water and let your nets down for a catch. While Peter may have accepted and recognized Jesus' authority as a teacher and leader, he probably doubted whether Jesus knew more about fishing than he did. Nonetheless, he let down his nets as Jesus said, and surprise, they caught, would catch as so many fish that their nets would begin to break. Indeed, even their boats were beginning to sink under this huge haul of fish. Then we hear a more contrite confession from Peter on his knees in the holy presence of Jesus. Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. I'm sure that Peter, like all the others, were truly amazed at the catch of fish. But the grace of Jesus also opened up this deeper issue in Peter's life, how to deal with his fear. He was deeply afraid to be in the presence of Jesus because he now recognized Jesus as a representative of the holiness of God. Indeed, he was right to be afraid. But he did not understand, yet understand the path that Jesus was taking for him and for us to lead us beyond our fears. When Christ calls us, we, he calls us not to be afraid of his love and grace that will always be there to catch us. Be not afraid, Jesus says to Peter. Grace has surely taught Peter's heart to fear. Yet grace would also relieve his fears. With fears relieved, Jesus calls him and his fishing companions to the new mission path that they will take with Jesus. From now on, you will be catching men. When we think of all the sinking in fear that was true for Peter, we might also consider that his name actually means rock. Yes, rocks sink, but rocks are also foundation stones for buildings. Peter would come to represent the rock on which the church stands, the rock that it holds the very foundation of the church, the rock that Peter makes in a bold, much bolder and more faithful confession of who Jesus is for us all. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus would say that this faithful confession that Peter makes is itself a grace given by our, our Father in heaven. The church joins Peter in this confession of faith. It is foundational stone of the church in its faithful witness to who Jesus is for us and the strength upon which the church is built. But that may not even, not even the gates of hell may prevail against it. But this confession also empowers us to grasp the power and freedom of the gospel, to go about loosening the chains that bind all of humanity, to set people free from their bondage to sin and death. All that sounds good to Peter, but Jesus also makes clear that the path of grace he follows as our Messiah, our Christ, is one that necessarily leads to the cross and to death. And that Peter cannot accept at this time. He rebukes Jesus as he does us. His rock begins to sink. Jesus calls him a scandalous stumbling block, even refers to him as Satan. Indeed, there is no path into Jerusalem for Jesus as a glorious Messiah without the cross. Christ's grace comes only by way of the passion. 
this would also be a lesson for Peter to learn when he was with Jesus on the holy mountain where Jesus was transfigured in all his glory. Peter did not fully grasp what it was all about. He did not as yet understand that there was no glory apart from the cross. Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwelling places, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. Then just as a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud came the voice, saying, This is my Son, the Beloved One, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Peter and the other disciples fell to the ground and were totally overcome by fear. Once again, Jesus came to them, and he touched them, and he raised them up, saying to them, Do not be afraid, for... Uh, from their knees looking up, they saw only Jesus. The glory they witnessed was not there in all its brilliance, nor were they even to speak of it until after Jesus was raised from the dead. Only Jesus takes the path of the cross so that we may forever rise beyond our fears. Peter certainly had more to learn about this grace that comes through the cross of Christ. That time would come soon enough, in the week of his trial and passion, Jesus would tell his disciples of the danger that now lay ahead and of how they will all be scandalized by this path that, now, uh, that Jesus must now take. They will all flee. But Peter would denounce that danger, boasting that he would never be scandalized to follow Jesus all the way and that he would eat, never flee from his side. Even though all become deserters, I will not. Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. But Jesus said to him, Truly, I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. So it was in the night, while Jesus was on trial in the court, that Peter would be found warming himself by the fire when a servant girl of the high priest came by and recognized him as a companion of Jesus, and he denied it. I, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. He tried to escape this scene and find another area of the courtyard where he could not be so easily noticed. But as he did, just then a cock crowed. And the same servant girl who recognized him earlier spotted him again, and she said to the others in the courtyard, This man is one of them. Once again, Peter denied it. Finally, one of the other bystanders confronted him, saying, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. At this point, Peter brought down curses upon himself and openly swore an oath before them. I do not know this man you are talking about. And at that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. And Peter realized what he had done. He had done exactly what he boasted he would not do. He had denied his Lord. He had denied his connection between him and Jesus. His fear got the best of him, and in his anguish and anxiety he fell again on his knees in tears, weeping bitterly for the sinful, scandalous wrong that he said he would never come to. But Jesus' grace was not finished with Peter. Even in this fearful denial and betrayal of Jesus that severed all bonds of their connection, Jesus would not sever his love and grace for Peter. He would go to the cross for the fearful Peter and for us all. And when Jesus was raised from the dead, he would show Peter his wounded hands and his pierced side and call him Peter not to sorrow, but to rejoice in the promise that his grace would never let him go. Jesus, the Messiah, caught and held Peter in his crucified hands. Once again, Jesus would call Peter to catch people in the grace of this promise and to feed others in his healing and forgiving mercy. The journey for Peter, however, would also come by way of his own passion and suffering for the faith. But Peter was emboldened to pick up his cross and follow Jesus because Jesus 
would never let him go. Peter would testify before all, Christ's amazing grace is that which God now bestows upon all through the power of the Holy Spirit. He said, in the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And when Peter was on trial before those who were critical of his proclamations about the grace of Jesus the Christ, Peter would again confess boldly, we must obey God rather than human authority. Peter would also come to a recognition that he underestimated the extent of God's grace for all the nations. Yet he would come to boldly confess that God's grace in Jesus the Christ is a gift for all, without limits or restrictions. As he once confessed boldly, so now he came to grasp fully through faith that not even the gates of hell can prevail against God's grace, and that all shall be set free from sin and death, from fear and abandonment. I truly understand that God shows no partiality. And, and so, in his own writings, to all who suffer persecutions in life and for whom fear and anxiety would certainly be present, Peter points to Christ's grace as their solid foundation. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. Like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. We are not to leave our crosses and all sufferings behind in fear, but to face the fiery ordeal with confidence that Jesus has called us and caught us into his grace. And as Jesus catches us, so he sends us out to catch others in the sure and certain promise of amazing grace. We follow our Lord's path to the cross in all humility and in all confidence, trusting that our Lord will lead us through the darkness of all our trials, beyond our fears, to the final fruits of his grace. St. Peter wrote, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, and strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Pray the collect for the Sunday of the Passion. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our faith with the Nicene Creed today uh, and uh, then pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. The Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made. For who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. 
He was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. He will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us again, and of course, it'd be even more wonderful if you could join us in person, Palm Sunday. Uh, Holy Thursday here at Zion, 7 p.m., Good Friday at Bethel at 10 a.m. or at Zion at 7, a, uh, 7 p.m., and then Easter Sunday brunch at Bethel uh, at 8, followed by worship at 9, worship here at Zion at 11, followed by potluck brunch here. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.